How you doing? Thank y'all. Jay, thank you for having me. <laughs> Man, you know what? A lot of albums have came out, but I promise you, each and every week, I talk about your album more than any other album, and I encourage people to go listen to this album. Don't I? You do all the time, but I want to say uh, last night, big, big show, and talk about people loving the album. Everybody knew all the words, it's bar revival. for bar. It's church, baby. You, is, is that what you call it? That, that's exactly what it is. Uh-huh. You saw me in the Midnight Revival up there in all white. You saw that church be back there. Mm-hmm. My DJ White, and he was in all white. We <laughs> almost, he almost disappeared. But he keep good rhythm and was tapping yeah. on it. Like, yeah, we we break the, a lot of underground rap and pure rap and big rap fans mm-hmm. have never been to a revival. Mm-hmm. And if you grew up in the South, at some point your grandma and your auntie then took you to a revival, you're like, why are we going to church on a Thursday? <laughs> right, right, and, right, and you get in there and the dope boys be down next to their mamas, the, 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 all the pretty girls being there with their aunties, you realize that people beyond church on a Sunday just mm-hmm. need to have their spirit revived in the yep. middle of the week. They need to hear good music. Revivals are almost as much about the music as they are the message. And I think that what people relate to this high and holy tour across the last 17 cities we've done and these sellouts we've been doing and people crying and getting a chance to mourn and, and celebrate and forgive, people saying, wow, that this is a truly a reviving experience. So well, that's why we're having a revival, not just a rapture. We don't get to experience that a lot in rap anymore because yeah. things come and go and we don't sit with music a lot I feel like I yeah. think every Friday something new is coming out well, and then it's not is, sticking part of it as, 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 a, as an artist you have to design something to be sat with mm. at some point we become so hit Designs an artist, you get you get in a, a partnership or a deal with a big label. They want to see results. Mm-hmm. It's like I just did a deal with a white guy. He's like, hey, we, you, we friends now, but I I, I give you a million dollars. We ain't friends till you pay me all the way back. <laughs> we business partners, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and that that's the relationship. So a lot of times, guys got to get that record out, got to get that song. The ringtones was out. It was the ringtones. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's who can get the most streams. But for me. I didn't have anything to lose. This record, I paid a half million dollars in my own pocket to record mm. it. This record, I'm already in a successful group with Run the Jewels, so I didn't need to go. It wasn't a desperation move. It was before I die, because after I caught COVID and laid on my face for 14 days, mm-hmm. before I die, I need to introduce the world to the man, Michael, mm. the little boy who grew up in an all-black neighborhood on all-black side of town with all-black schools, Carrie Heist, Frederick Douglass, Morehouse. How did this man come to be? Who poured into him? Who are the women that helped shape him and his mother and his grandmother and his children's mothers and his sisters and his icons? And I needed people to see that. So for me, it was, let me give people an experience that they hit play on. It starts, and 53 minutes later, they watch the audio. Mm. Okay, let's start with the album. Mm. Michael. Michael. Why did you name it Michael? I mean, obvious (laughs) question is your name. (laughs) But why? Why was it so significant? Well, part of it, just a quick quote, is my father is named Michael. I'm named for, he's named for the angel Michael. I'm named for my father. My daughter, Michael, is named for me and, and her brother, Michael. Mm-hmm. So for me, everybody else had all the good names. Michael get to be Kale, or we call him Pony Boy. My daughter gets to be Mikey. My dad's Big Mike. Wow. So everybody just calls me Michael in my family and their country. So it come out like Michael. You know what I mean? <laughs> Michael. Yeah, come Michael. Here, Michael. <laughs> so that's, then that's me. And I had never introduced the world to me. They had mm-hmm. heard me in proxy to my big brothers who are an amazing musicians, Outcast, greatest mm-hmm. rap group ever. Mm-hmm. They had heard me in proxy to my one of my best friends and brothers, T.I., mm-hmm. when, during my tenure with Grand Hustle. They had heard me in proxy to my rap partner, half the super group, Run the Jewels LP, but they never just met Michael. So the, the, Run the Jewels is like the uncanny X-Men, a mm. bunch of characters, and Michael is like the origin story of Wolverine, like Logan. Okay, now, Tupac is my favorite artist of all time. Absolutely. He got a song called Dear Mama. Uh-huh. Best song about a mama I ever heard uh-huh. until I heard Motherless. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about that song? It's such a powerful song. Man, I think they're a great one-two punch because if your mother's still here, dear mama teaches you to appreciate her. And if your mother's gone like my mother and grandmother are, it really gives you the opportunity to have the reverence um, and give honor to your ancestors. Um, you know, dear mama talks about when Pox talk, talk, talk about even as a crack teen, mama, mm-hmm. right. I always wore my black queen. There was a moment of clarity and honesty. When I and I say, um, you know, my mama my dead. Mine. You know, I say my mama dead. Uh-huh. Her mama dead. Her mama died in my arms. My mom said that wasn't fair. Her mama raised me. I told her she crazy. She told me I'm gonna be gone one day, Michael. You gonna see that my mama wanted you, but you belong to me, mm. and you don't understand the sacrifice that took from me. 
And she, I, I, and after she was gone, she was right. I said, you know, I said, sometimes I feel like pulling up on Sunday nights just to tell y'all apologize mm-hmm. and mama, you was right. Sometimes I feel like a hole in my heart that I want to call the Lord, but I don't know where to start. After my mother died and I was on a plane trying to get back to her, um, I accepted a FaceTime. I was on the plane. I was watching her go. And, man, I just I just remember it, it, with each pe- moment of her passing, I greater felt her love for me. And I, um, my, my grandmother had me read the Book of Solomon when I was a little boy. The stories just came back to me. I was Solomon. had two women before him saying, this is my child. And he said, cut the child in half and give each a half. It was the mother mm. that was really his mother that said, give my baby to the other woman. And it was in that moment, my mother's death, that I understood how much she loved me. Mm. And, um, you know, I can't do nothing now but, you know, pray at the altar and, and, uh, and, and, and pay libations and thank her. But, but she was right. How do you yeah. deal with it now? And I'm saying this because yeah. J-Mac's my brother. I talk to J-Mac yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, the only topic that I ever see him get emotional, emotional about is his mom. Yeah. And I always say, Mac, you need to go to therapy a little bit because I feel like you yeah. keep so much inside. Yeah, and you haven't do. fully fully healed from yeah. that and then you're not going to fully heal from losing your mom nah, that's just something you're not nah. going to um but what would your suggestion be to people who's lost their mom well that's what shed tears is about on my album a lot of men i want to acknowledge that with j mac a lot of men carry a lot you know and a lot of women who love me and understand that that's why this album is accepted the way it is i see people that with their old ladies at the shows it ain't just a room full of I love this guy, ladies, and the guy just I had to come with. It ain't room full of guys and ladies like, man, got to go to another underground rap store. It's couples that understand. It's healing. Like, so when shed tears, when I talk about it, sometimes you just go in the bathroom and cry. Mm. That's how you deal with it. Some mm-hmm. days you smile because yeah. you say, I got it right. Mm-hmm. Some days you're just so broken you can't go outside. Some days you understand I have my own children, mm. and this is what she, to honor her, I got to be the best father I can be. You know, so if you need therapy, see therapy. If you if seek therapy and get it, there's nothing wrong with talking to somebody. But man, my grandmother said something, and it is truly answer. You got to pray. Mm-hmm. Right. You got to pray. Mm-hmm. You got to understand that we are connected to something that is divine, that is not outside of us. It is in us. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely in us, and it is of us. And you are connected to it. And give it up. If if the tears come, give it up. Mm-hmm. If the laughter comes, laugh as loud as you can mm-hmm. in the parking lot, screaming if you want to, hitting that stern wheel. Because you do miss them. Or you miss your father. Or drugs and addiction have turned your uncle. Okay, you know? speaking of that, and I'm glad you got on a drug addiction. Yeah, there's I mean, something for junkies. I can understand that because a lot of us have drug addicted people in our family. I have an uncle who's addicted to drugs. And I bet that's your man. Look at you smiling. You think about it. <laughs> for that's real. That's everybody's favorite uncle. My, my uncle Jeff <laughs> owes me some money. Negro would have died on me. For yeah. real. <laughs> I, I, I love him. But tell us about this song because it's another Se- powerful song. Oh, and the man. words you say in here, it touched my soul. Oh, man. Something for junkies. Something for losers. Uh-huh. Addicts and users. Substance abusers. This is something for junkies. I, um, I got an auntie. I said, woke up straight, trapped with great, counting my money, had a quick combo with my auntie, the junkie. I tell her, baby, you've been looking too hard, going too hard lately. So you like 60, baby, but you've been looking 80. 80. She said, mm, Michael, I've been smoking since 80, before the shooters, back when they still called it Free Basin. <laughs> she closed her eyes, fantasized by better times when she was beautiful, fine, and still snorting lines. She told me stories of glory to Club San Susie. Atlanta nightlife was rich. I was glamour, rich, black, bougie, a, a movie. She said, "On mm. the day I'm Lucy," and <laughs> so it's a true story in which my auntie, the I in that verse, which y'all gonna listen to it. She said, "I she said, Michael, I know you love, love me. me. You, I, you say you love me. I know you mean it because you still treat your junkie auntie like a human being. Mm. That's a real conversation. Mm. My auntie made me. If I had made like ten thousand dollars, I think on the man. <laughs> you know, I got a seventy nine <laughs> Cutley thing on rallies with gold flakes on clean. And I'd have made a little ten. She didn't help me. She didn't help me. You know what I mean, huh?" Guy who thought he liked her chasing around forever. He want to spend all he can all weekend. She didn't help me make a lot of money. And she told me, uh, sitting on the trunk, you know, just talking. She smoked. She said, you know, she said, all the, the same. Y'all, all y'all little boys get y'all stuff from the same three-fold dude. <clears throat> she said, I know. She, I done had most of them. They wanted to be my man. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to control me, though, especially with no dope. You know, they junk want to mm-hmm. talk to you like. Mm-hmm. Right. And, she, and then she's talking to me. My my little blowed up ego just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking because right. I I know I'm the same age to as I was when I met her. She talking to a toddler, right? You know what mm. I mean. She, and I'm thinking I'm a man because I'm 19, 20. But she said she said the only reason we come to you 
and helping me get a lot of money is because you treat us like human beings. And she hugged me and kissed me my cheek and walked off. Okay, you where know? is she at now? I'm just she, curious. She good. She, she got a trucking company now. What? She, uh, yeah, she, she rebounded. She great. She great. My, my other one of my other street aunties, a beautician, got her own parlor, you know. Okay, I hate to talk about this album, Keisha, and we can go to some other things. Because we know, we could, we could keep going on Because I right. love this album, but I got to ask you, it's the album of the year. You know, it's a generational statement, you know. And, yeah. and I love the features, too, that you got on the album, by yeah. the way. Even with, like, Blast. Okay, so, okay, hold on. Mazi. You said Blast. You said Blast. Mm -hmm. I was in bar 5015, mm -hmm. and they played this song. So can you give them a little bit? Exit 9, man. Yeah. Exit yeah. 9, man. That's all. Y'all got to hear that one. This It's like, it's it's a it's a today was a good day it, it, for me. It's, it's Exit 9 is Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Car Ice, and Adamville. It's the Adamville exit off right. 285 in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a man. I, I done spent so much time. That's my whole life. The mayor of Atlanta is from the exit. Right. You know, he wow. been doing the album drop. Like, man, don't listen to the exit nine. <laughs> he's a real music guy. But exit nine, y'all go this man, go download the stream the album. Like, give it's a it's a drive. Everywhere in Houston, they take you to go. You gotta go to a guy who's gonna take an hour. <laughs> yeah, give me give me an okay, hour. Okay, one more, one more. You speaking on uh I think somebody had an abortion or you yeah, was giving this me. girl yeah, slumber. The I got a girl pregnant when I was in high school slumber oh, slumber yeah. yep slumber like I, summer but slum oh i love this song also yep slumber slum is um slumber just talk about um you know i just man i thought i was grown again like we i want to tell people qualify too because i saw a lady hit on twitter like um mark lamont hill gave me a beautiful compliment and just mm -hmm. saying that on this album how i showed redemption for right. having been sold drugs you know we didn't know if you watch snowfall nobody knew what was happening Mm -hmm. As the Reagan administration allowed a, a plethora of drugs to, to flood the community, and as a child, I really I went and apologized to a man I used to sell drugs to. I seen him in the store, like, "Hey, man, I want to tell you, like, oh, wow. I, I didn't know I was taking from your children's mouth." I was a, he said, "Man, you was a child yourself, right? I didn't have no business asking you for." He's two years before he was my hero. Two years after he was asking me for, so I didn't know. So with Slummer, you you serving a little bit. You think you the man, right? And and it, and this girl I dated, man, who was my girlfriend. Who's actually a person who told me, you know, you bigger than the life you're trying to lead. Mm. But we got pregnant and we had to have an abortion. And it, that that guilt never left me. I needed to exercise myself for that. So this record is that. It is a, you know, if you compare, you know, dear mama to motherless, this mm -hmm. is Brent, this is the other side of Brenda's <laughs> having a baby. Ooh, you know, wow, I don't man. I don't do the pop comparisons like a lot of yeah, rappers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pac and yeah, right. Yeah. That's to me, that's not a that's not a, you know, because you got to take all the burden he had. Right. You know, he was extremely intelligent. Right. Intelligence is gonna leave you to grieve. Mm. Right. Every time. The yes. more intelligent you are, yes, the more you're yes, gonna suffer yes. because you can't unsee mm -hmm, what you've seen. Mm -hmm. So when I compare it to Brenda's having a baby in terms of the other side, right, you know, it's it's because I don't, you know, at, at 16 years old paying for an abortion, that's never gonna leave you. Mm. You know. Mm. So I just it never left me. But it, but on the other side, man, she turned out to be a wonderful wife and mother to her guy, her children. Mm -hmm. She 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 really did hug me and say, "Man, you did it." I told wow. you, and I really I really honored her. You know, I saw I saw one of her kids before I left town. Really? Wow. Yeah, I said just randomly. He could, you know, everybody know me. And, yeah. oh, and I'm like, what? I'm like, man, you know, how you doing? It was it was a beautiful thing because I know what she had to sacrifice mm -hmm. to, to be that. And I uh, just appreciate it. I'm going to stop talking about this album. Y'all need I, to get this album. Yeah, stop I, playing I do want to say you have so many layers to you, right? Rappers, yeah. social activists, everything. What do you truly feel like your contribution to this world is? Man, w one day when they say, man, the blue fly in the best strip club in the world, I'm going to know that started <laughs> with me. <laughs> nah, nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> nah, you know, you know what I honestly. Honestly, I just honestly no 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 BS. My mother, Denise, uh, decided to have me in 1974 at 15. She had me mm -hmm. in 1975 at 16. Her and my father were teen teenage uh, parents. My grandparents raised me, but they had a child too young. All the odds were against them. It was said that their child wouldn't make it. It was said that their child was dyslexic. He was. It was said a bunch of things that couldn't be or wouldn't be. He couldn't get in a Morehouse. He couldn't be successful as a rapper. He wasn't going to be a solid man because he had already had children before marriage. And I defied all that. You know, I said, mm -hmm. I said, when I told my mama on the mother's side, I said, you know, I said, um, you won't believe it, mama. I achieved it, mama. mama. You know what I'm saying? A black boy born to a teen mama, mama gets regarded as a leader by his people, mama. That's what I've accomplished. I've accomplished what my grandparents instilled in me to take care of yourself and your, your sisters and your family. Mm -hmm. Do not embarrass our name mm -hmm. and do not embarrass black people. Mm. And, and you yeah. got a few 
uh, four beautiful kids. Oh man, I got four. I got a, I got a bunch. Skater, I got, huh? Yeah, I got a skater and Malik who just left the X Games, hanging out with Tony Hawk, which oh, is wow. a, which uh, is amazing. I'm the on the board of Tony's um, program, which puts skate parks in underprivileged neighborhoods from from everything from reservations in the middle of the country to 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 hoods throughout urban areas. So shouts out to Tony for that. A rapper? Yeah, man, Pony Boy. You know he who he actually is a great rapper. We're waiting on a kidney for him as he's on dialysis, but I just love him, man. He's a strong kid. He's smart, intuitive, and a heck of a musician. I have a daughter, Anaya. Junior? Yep. Uh, Anaya is um is she she does makeup on set and off. Oh, wow. She has a business called a paint shop. I'm very proud of her. And my youngest daughter, Mikey, who I've just, God just showed me she has a sense of humor because she made her little face exactly like mine and her brain twice as intelligent. So I'm oh, arguing man. politics with a 16 year old who's a devout Democrat and her father's wow. probably more of an independent, interestingly. Wow. And speak on your wife. Oh uh, man, she, she, she's ace. You know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of what she's been able to do is growing up in the Yamacraw Housing Project. And, you know, not only just marrying a man, but, you know, adding to them and, and, and growing business and define some of the odds that they said about poor black girls everywhere. So, mm. you know, shouts out to Shay. Mm. That's it, Killer Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, because we can go on and on. I mean, we, I know it, man. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank I, you thank so you. much. Thank you. I appreciate y'all so much, you. man. This has been, this has been a, and in case y'all missed the show last night, y'all missed Revival. We'll be back during the winter. Okay. Put on your all white, and I'll see you back at church again. Love it. It's 97 out of the box. Good, Good morning, morning H-Town. H-Town.